What's up, Facebook? Happy Monday. Rock Covery Fitness going live. We are back at it. I uh, hope everyone had a good weekend. It was absolutely beautiful out yesterday. So I hope some of you were able to get outside and enjoy that sunshine. It's funny because it's much chillier today and, of course, complete cloud cover. But um, So anyways, I hope you were able to get outside at least for a little bit yesterday. I know I was able to get outside and... And do a little bit of hiking yesterday. Um, you know, for me, I, I, you know, I only did uh, one Zoom meeting in the morning, and then, um, you know, I was trying to stay off the computer almost or the rest of the day. Um, tried to stay off the phone for the majority of the day, and it was it was just so nice to take a break from that. Um, and you know, while understanding too that you know this obviously is our main way of connection right now is is the phone and, and the social media and you know all of our little virtual world that we all live in right now while that's very important you know i'm also realizing that you know after my weekend of disconnecting with it for a little bit even a couple hours um it just it just really helped out a lot um so you know i had kind of asked a few of you last week you know what were at the beginning of last week i actually asked quite a few of you know like what were some things that have been working for you throughout your weeks um what things are you discovering were working well to get through this time um to keep a structured schedule at home to keep yourself busy to keep yourself connected um and some of the things that aren't working so well for you guys you know to take a look at some of those things too and i had shared very early last week that for me all the all the virtual was just becoming too much and I was having a, uh, a really hard time finding that balance. So I'm curious what that looks like for you guys at the start of each week, you know, like what, what kind of worked well for you last week? Um, what are some things that didn't work well? What are some things you want to improve or do differently or experiment with this week? Um, you know, it is Monday, start of a new week. And, um, you know, like what is your, what is your intention going to look like for this week? How are you going to set that? Um, so again, for me yesterday, like, again, just really, really disconnecting as much as possible yesterday. It was just such a relief. Um, I've kind of been just getting like a headache behind my eyes just from, you know, staring at a screen so much. So for me realizing that I need to step away for a little bit for, for my own well-being, and, you know, it's, it's so important, you know, I can't stress enough and it's been stressed to me enough too about self-care. So how are you guys doing with that? You know, how is how is your self-care? What does that look like for you? What are you doing for self-care? Um, are you able to disconnect a little bit, but also find the balance of connecting when you need to, um, reaching out when you need help, or showing up and being there for others? You know, are you able to find a balance? And, you know, just like that idea of perfection is something we never fully reach, you know, balance is kind of the same thing. Balance is just this, just this thing we really just put in our effort to do our best that we can every day. But also having acceptance that balance is something we just don't ever fully reach. Um, you know, it's it's so hard to have perfect balance all the time, right? You know, I, I'm a Libra and my balance beams are all over the place. Um, but yeah, so just, just doing some quick check-ins with yourself. Um, you know, instead of just kind of floating through the week, kind of absent-mindedly, kind of, you know, kind of blah, you know, like pay pay attention to that. You know, what are what are the things that went well last week and what are the things that didn't go well? And what are you going to do differently this week? Um, you know, I believe that every week is a different, it's a different ball game. You know, it's, I always share this, you know, what, what worked for me well last week is not necessarily going to work well every single day this week, you know? Um, so just really kind of checking in with yourselves and, um, asking yourselves those questions and, you know, having the willingness to kind of put in the work and, and, and be okay with, you know, trial and error every single day lately is trial and error of figuring out what works for that moment and what doesn't work. So I hope that you all are staying on top of that. Um, but glad to be back. Glad it's Monday. Uh, hey, Danny, Mo, Erica, nice to see you all. Um, so last week I was checking in with you guys quite a bit every day, but we also started reading um, from Hopeful Healing by Mackenzie Phillips. Um, so just to give you all a quick little background on that, um, maybe some of you have heard of Mackenzie before she was... She was a soap opera star at one point in her life. Um, she's an actress. Uh, she also has her own memoir called High on Arrival. Um, and that really talks more about her story and her own journey. Um, she's also the daughter of the founder of the 1960s band, The Mamas and the Papas. Mackenzie grew up in a dysfunctional environment and subsequently battled a near fatal drug addiction. Now she's a drug and alcohol counselor and an outspoken advocate for addiction awareness and education. She gets real about the hard times of recovery, how to get through them, and the joy of experiencing life clean and sober. 
Mo says, I eased into the virtual lifestyle, had fun Zooming with old friends, and even took three Zoom workouts. One with a friend who invited me and two on my own with the Phoenix. That is awesome. So cool. Uh, exploring slowly and not overdoing any one thing. That's perfect, right? I, I love that. I eased into the virtual lifestyle, right? Um, it's so important to just kind of slowly ease in that stuff because if all of a sudden I'm jumping right into it and I'm hitting six meetings a day and I've got 50 phone calls a day and I've got this phone glued to my glued to my face, glued to my ear. I'm spending all this time in that virtual lifestyle. Like that's It's going to catch up quick. Um, so I love that, being able to ease into that, right? Being gentle with ourselves. That's perfect. Sounds awesome. Doing workouts with the Phoenix too. That's so cool, Mo. Thank you for the check-in. Um, and anyone else who's just joining right now, feel free to do a quick check-in. How last week went? What were you What were you doing to help yourself? What were you doing that went well? What What are the things that weren't going well? Maybe some things you want to try this week. Um, and to give you just a little background on what this book is about. Um, so Mackenzie says, so each chapter is like its own short little essay on, on different pieces of recovery. Um, you know, kind of going through this somewhat pattern of, you know, like defining recovery, uh, defining addiction, you know, what that is, um, identifying yourself, some of the struggles, and then, you know, giving hope. So each, each, each little chapter is its own little um, essay on, on whatever the topic is. Mackenzie says, in these essays, I've concentrated on the concept and feelings that surround the recovery process, rather than on the linear story of my life in recovery. I wanted to preserve the conversational foundation of these essays so that they would provide a genuine experience, and hopefully the person reading them would find a friend and some words that are helpful along their own journey. This is a wisdom book, not a clinical book. This is also a conversational book. While I do include some facts about substance use disorders, I make no claim to being an expert on all things addiction and recovery. I am, however, an expert in my own experiences of those two things. And it is in this that I have found the strongest connection with my clients and at the recovery center where I work. So it's just to give you a little bit on this book. So what I've been doing with you all is just kind of picking, kind of going through each of the chapters. The chapters are a little bit long, so I haven't been reading all of them, but more so kind of just jumping around and pulling, you know, the meat out of that and pulling bits and pieces out of that. And again, I'm reading it as exactly as Mackenzie wrote it. Um, you know, as always, as we talked about last week, just being aware of our language too. Um, so yes, I am reading it as she wrote it, but even some of the language in there, I would, you know, for me, I would question using that today, you know, really just trying to focus on, you know, really positive language, um, the way we define ourselves, really using that person centered language, um, you know, instead of saying, instead of focusing on the harmful words that sometimes we call ourselves or, you know, a lot of those words that give people an addiction more of that stigma because there is so much of stigma that goes with addiction. Um, so just without getting too much into that topic, just kind of being aware of that as, as I'm reading through this. So today's chapter is titled Life is Messy, and this is on choices, responsibility, and consequences. Um, and she always starts each one with a quote. Um, this is from Eleanor Roosevelt. In the long run, we shape our lives and we shape ourselves. The process never ends until we die. And the choices we make are ultimately our own responsibility. I love that. Right? We never, and that's just so true, you know, like we never, we never stop growing. Like for any of, I, I say this quite frequently, you know, for any of us to ever get to a point in life where we can just say, there, I'm done, got it all figured out. Life's great, smooth sailing from here. There's no more, nothing to be learned because I have got it all figured out. For any of us to ever be at that mindset is dangerous, right? It's just not true, you know. Every single human, none of us ever stop growing and shaping our lives and shaping ourselves. Like that's a never ending process and, until we leave, until we leave this earth, you know. I believe anyways. All right, so again, I'm kind of, I'm not really reading um, every single thing in this chapter, just kind of pulling some bits and pieces out. Um, so please feel free to comment here. As always, I ask you guys to be outrageously open and uh, mindful and vulnerable on here, and as always, respectful of each other's comments too. So love to hear from some of you all. All right, we'll jump right in. So Mackenzie says, it's funny that in real life, we have a tendency to want black and white certainties, clear-cut lines between cause and effect. But that's not always the way it works. We want to have formulas that give precise answers and guaranteed predictions. We want to find the choice that caused a particular outcome. If only it were that easy. Life is full of layers of choices and layers of results. I like to think about it as painting with watercolor. Everything flowing into everything else with translucent, delicate layers. Everyone's life is bumping, like watercolors, against everyone else's lives. Because like it or not, we are all a part of an unbelievably large canvas, each of us adding our own bit to the larger picture. 
Think about your choices as the colors you add or don't add. You are responsible for what they do on the canvas. Whatever they create, a brilliant hue that clarifies a bit of the picture or whether they muddy it. The other colors that are being painted by someone who is not you, the way the water already on the paper makes the colors run, and the aims and visions of the other painters, turns the endeavor into a communal effort. Are you working well in the painting? Are you putting a splash of blue next to chartreuse? Or are you making things clash? Are you mindfully trying to be a part of things? Or are you setting yourself apart from them the way you did in your act of addiction? On this canvas called life, it's all about the choices we make and the results of those choices. Did I make something better or worse? I'm responsible for whatever those choices are and for whatever I do. I'm accountable for my actions and my words, good or bad. And the, and the consequences are mine as well, good or bad. When talking with my clients about choice, I will often give them this metaphor. Think of choices like a beautiful tree, a very old tree, with all kinds of branches that intersect with each other. Imagine yourself standing at the base of this beautiful old tree. As you climb up toward recovery and wellness, each branch represents a different path you can take. Will you reach for the branches that don't look so sturdy? Or will you go for the ones that look stronger and that are closer to the next branch you need to aim you need to aim for to get to the top? The key is to evaluate, to determine whether going out on a particular branch will leave you hung out to dry or whether you'll be able to reach the next branch to your next choice from there. You can be like a crazy monkey jumping from branch to branch until you land on the one that breaks or leaves you with nowhere to go. Or you can mindfully choose a path. What's great about taking the mindful route is that you can see that choosing a particular path doesn't prevent you from going off in a new direction later. You can see that your current path intersects with other options ahead. The choice tree holds two possibilities. Number one, it can be a wonderful thing full of branches and options that lead you onward to the next branch that takes you ever higher. Or number two, it can be a dangerous place full of dead branches that go nowhere. You get to choose which it will be for you. Here's the truth. You won't get very far without some planning. It is essential to plot your path. With life as complex as it is, it's important to figure out strategies for how we go about dealing with all of it. And without drugs or alcohol, most people do not consciously create a strategy for decision making. They do it on the go, based off of experience, the situation at hand, and what they've been taught. An addict can't and shouldn't rely on their automatic decision making ability. Their addiction makes that ability unreliable at best because it has its own agenda to get higher drunk. So give yourself a blueprint for making decisions and understanding that even deciding to do nothing is a choice. Before I do something I'm not sure of, I ask for help. I call my sponsor or my best friend. Asking for help is a great strategy. My trusted advisors ask me some basic questions. Will this harm anyone, myself included? Is it respectful of myself and others? Will it make things better or worse? Is it kind? Is it necessary? Is it true? After I've made my call, I have a few additional questions. Have I acted with love? And am I being fair? You don't have to have the same strategy, but you do need a strategy. Some kind of criteria that allows you to consistently make the safest and healthiest choices you are able to make. Once you get it, stick to it, work it, be fierce and stubborn about it, because it's hard to hold on to a strategy that moves you away from your active reward system. After the decision comes the responsibility and the consequence. We often come at taking, sorry, we often come at taking responsibility for our actions from a moralistic or judgmental place. Was this good or bad? When internally we really mean, am I good or bad? Because I made this good or bad decision or did this good or bad thing. If it's a good thing, we are usually pretty okay with taking responsibility for it and accepting the consequences. If it's a bad thing, well, that's a crappy feeling, and why deal with it when it can be ignored or smothered by shooting up or drinking? Bad decisions humble us and cause us pain. Pain leaves a memory and print in the brain so that we have it to reference if a similar situation arises so we don't do it again. When you try to circumvent that pain with drugs or alcohol, you mess it up. You make a mistake and then you repeat it. Even worse, because you get high to avoid the whole thing, you're basically giving yourself a reward, a reward for bad choices. Talk about messed up. How do we navigate that? 
Well, first, don't put it into a place of moralistic judgment so quickly. Let it be what it is. Acknowledge to yourself that you made the decision and that the consequences are happening. Remember acceptance and surrender? Those are facts. Once you have that, you can then look at whatever you have made a choice that doesn't, in some way, shape, or form, betray you, betray who you are at your core. Um, so I kind of want to pause there for a second and um, kind of go back to talking about uh, this, this, this tree. Um, I kind of love that, this tree of choices. Um, for me, I personally like metaphors. Um, it just kind of helps me. I'm a very visual person, so hearing metaphors, you know, I'm able to kind of grasp the concept a little bit easier in, in my own head. And, um, you know, I just, lo I just love that, you know, like we, we have to, you know, kind of strategy through life a little bit. Like she says, we have to have some planning. It's essential to plot our path, you know. And even with that, you know, we talked about balance at the beginning of this video. You know, there's balance in that too. You know, what I've learned so far is that, you know, I do need some plotting and planning in my life, right? I do need to strategize a little bit. I do need to have some plans in place, and I do need to have some safety plans in place um, for many different areas of my life, you know. But what I've also realized on the other end of that is when I take that thing to the extreme, as I often do, you know, with many areas in my life, that can get overwhelming and unmanageable too. You know, it's not sustainable. So I literally cannot plot and plan every little tiny thing in my entire life. That's too much. And oftentimes, most of our plans that we plan, you know, the universe or God or whatever you choose to believe in, you know, often throws a wrench our often throws a wrench in our day, right? Sometimes those plans completely fall by the wayside because something else comes up. Um, and I believe that that happens for a reason, right? So again, it's kind of doing our best to maintain that balance. You know, I, I can't plot and plan every little tiny detail, you know, you just can't. It's just not sustainable and it's not realistic. You know, those plans change. But still remembering that I need some type of plan in place. And I, and I love that, you know, the tree holds two possibilities. So we, I always talk about pers perspective shift with you. You know, you can look at your, your, your choice tree as a wonderful thing full of branches and options that lead you onward to the next branch that takes you ever higher, you know, like that recovery, she said that recovery and that wellness is at the top of that tree. So the tree can be a beautiful thing full of all sorts of different choices and, and different, you know, forks on the road and things like that. You know, that's all of our life journeys. Um, and, you know, I can do my best to kind of very carefully move to the next choice, but sometimes, you know, even, even, even then, you know, life kind of throws different things in our way that we didn't expect, right? That's the excitement and, and, you know, spontaneous parts of life. Um, but I can still do my best to kind of make those calculated moves sometimes. You know, I have to be careful about those branches I'm going to choose to climb next. Am I going to choose the little tiny branches that are, are old and brittle and dead and look like they're going to snap as soon as I grab that branch to climb? Or am I going to choose the stronger, you know, healthier branches? You know, the branches that I'm able to continue to be close to other branches so I can quickly reach the next one. You know, so it's, it's still important to have a little bit of that planning behind it. You know, but remembering that perspective. You know, your second option in your perspective, or you can view your choice tree as a dangerous place full of dead branches that go nowhere. You get to choose which it will be here for you. Um, so just kind of remembering that moving forward. And I also love when she talks about some of these questions. You know, when, I, when I'm about to do something that I'm not sure of or I'm getting stuck, you know, instead of just, um, you know, quickly reacting and just making a split decision and being impulsive and probably getting myself into trouble, you know, we, we were talking about this last week to kind of pause and take a step back, you know, reach out to your people first, you know, even, even if you're not in recovery, this is, this is good for all, for all of us humans to be able to do that. You know, we all should have a small group of trusted advisors that we can go to, you know, maybe it's a parent, maybe it's a sibling, maybe it's a spouse, um, you know, significant other, maybe, maybe it's your sponsor, maybe it's your best friend. I don't know, you know, Maybe you just kind of want to sit with it and give that up to the universe and a higher power, you know. But the whole point of it is to just pause and seek some advice before we move forward when we get stuck. It's so important, you know. Oftentimes I've noticed that, you know, when I go to other people for advice, if I'm stuck on something, they'll often, and it's not that they're trying to stop me from what I'm doing, but what I love about that, you know, my, my closest friends, my trusted advisors, my sponsor, you know, they'll help me see it from all angles, you know, because we're humans, right? We can't possibly see every single angle, and sometimes we miss the really important ones. So that is why it is so important for us to talk about it with other people and so that we don't miss all the angles. You know, sometimes someone will tell me something about, 
you know, a situation that I'm stuck in. And they're like, well, did you think of it from this angle? And what it could look like if you went down this path? And I'm like, oh, I didn't even think of that. You know, like, wow, that was really helpful. Or maybe it wasn't so helpful. I don't know. But, you know, it gives that different perspective. You know, and these are these are the basic questions that some of her trusted advisors ask her. So, you know, I, I encourage you all, you know, if you have people that you go to in your life that you trust, you know, do they ask you, do they ask you these kinds of questions? You know, um, will this harm anyone, including myself? Is it respectful of myself or others? Will it make things better or worse? Is it kind? Is it necessary? Is it true? You know, it's really important for us to think on those things before we act. How many times have we made those choices in our lives where we didn't think about any of those things and something that came out of our mouth was not kind and it was not true and it was not necessary and it made things worse, right? Because we didn't just slow down and pause first. You know, there is there is true joy and wisdom in the pause. I'm, I'm realizing this for me very much so lately, you know. Um, and, you know, this pause, this, this time that we've, this downtime that we've been given, you know, like that's, this is even, you know, helping me in that way too. Like this is literally forcing me and all of us to slow down, right? So it's kind of, it's kind of already like planning that new little pathway in my own brain to just even slow down when I'm making my decisions, right? Um, so just some really, really good things to think about in here. Um, you know, no matter, no matter what we do in life, and there's always going to be a consequence for any of our actions. Um, and they're not all bad, right? Sometimes we have, we have good consequences. Sometimes we have rewards for, for the choices that we make for our actions, for doing something well. Sometimes, excuse me, sometimes there's a reward for that. It's not all bad. Um, but no matter what, any choice and any action that we take, there's always a consequence. Um, and she says that bad decisions humble us and cause us pain. Pain leaves a memory imprint in the brain so that we have it to reference to, so that we have it to reference if a similar situation arises so we don't do it again. That's the idea anyway, right? So when you try to circumvent that pain with drugs or alcohol, you mess up that, that, um, that imprint on the brain. You make a mistake and then you repeat it. Um, and then, and then oftentimes, you know, we, we go and use anyways to just try and avoid the whole thing because it all got messed up, right? Um, you know, how many of us have been down that path over and over and over again? Um, and she says, you're basically giving yourself a reward for the negative choices that we make. It's messed up. You know, it's, it's kind of interesting to think about it in that light. Um, kind of moving on a little bit. She says, you can start by acknowledging that life is freaking complex, <laughs> that it's not going to be these clear, neat scenarios. Responsibility and consequences, choices, they're a part of a complex relational thing, which can be super frustrating when you're trying to establish that the hell is going on during your recovery, right? You know, life is complex, like especially now more so than ever, right? None of us have ever been through or seen anything like this before. This is complex stuff. This is not easy and it's not neat. It's messy. It can be messy, you know? It's hard. You can't have a conversation about responsibility without also having a conversation about support. Th that goes back to speaking about having help as you go through your process of understanding what's yours to carry and what isn't. When you're trying to fix something that's broken, you need others who have experience, who have perspective, who have been there, who can act as sounding boards, and whose lives can be great examples of what can happen as you work the process of recovery. You know, that's why those supports are just so important. You know, sometimes Sometimes I, you know, if, if, if you are somebody who is in recovery, you know, sometimes those supports, you know, can come from a 12-step community. And that doesn't work for everybody, and that's okay. You know, like, whatever pathway you choose, that's totally fine. If it works for you and keeps you, you sober and healthy, that's great, you know. But sometimes in those 12-step rooms, like, there, there are people who have been doing this a much longer time than I have, right? So sometimes I'll seek them out because they have all of this experience. They've been through this stuff before. So they can guide me, you know. They can't, they can't certainly make me do one thing or the other but they can tell me like hey like this is what works and this is what hasn't worked at least in my experience and that's all this is with you you know I'm only up here sharing my experience I'm not an expert on anything other than my own experience and even that sometimes you know I'm not an expert until looking back in hindsight and having these realizations like oh that's what that meant or oh that's what that was sometimes that doesn't happen until years later down the road um so Mackenzie said learning to see the complexity of your life as being beautiful, I'm sorry, learning to see the complexity of your life as being beautiful is freeing. It's freeing to know that you are more than one thing at a time, that you have layers to yourself, that you can say, I can be happy 
and right underneath that, I can be sad. And know that both of those things are okay and both things are true. We're allowed to be complex. We're allowed to have it be messy. Life is a hot, unraveled yarn mess, and the mess usually has consequences. Consequence. The result of a decision, of a choice, of an action. The consequence of a choice can be both good and bad. But for you, um, an addict or someone who is struggling with anything that you're struggling with, um, deciding to take drugs or to drink will always end in bad consequences. Always. The ramifications for your brain, your spirit, and your life are all negative. And you always have to live with them. Always. It's brutal. There are no side roads you can take to avoid the consequences, mostly because the consequence of an action is the destination. It may take you a while to get there, but you will get there. Just know that if you decide to try and avoid the destination for as long as possible, you will almost certainly create more chaos along the way and have more consequences to deal with when you arrive. So that being the case, the best course of action is to own and accept the consequences and make a beginning. Do not linger at the rest stop. Does this sound like fun? Of course it doesn't, but do it anyway. Why? Because waiting to deal with consequences is emotionally crushing. Putting off the inevitable only makes the inevitable more difficult to face. The dread of what might happen takes up residence in our thoughts and our bodies and pushes everything else away. You live waiting for the shoe to drop, even if you try to fill up your life with other distractions, whether that's drugs or alcohol or sex or shopping or relationships or anything, really. Um, any distraction, right? Um, so it's so that's so important to note right there. You know, there are no side roads we can take to avoid consequences. You know, like I was just saying a moment ago, every cho every choice in life, every action has a consequence. You know, that's the result. It's the result of a decision I've made. So it can be good and it can be bad. But for those negative choices that I have made in my life, there are consequences. There are ramifications for for my brain, my spirit, my life, and oftentimes they were negative. You know. But I can't avoid them. I can't take a shortcut around them. I can't sweep them under the rug and pretend that they didn't happen and that they're not there. You know, it's so important for us to acknowledge those things when we do have negative consequences. You know, we accept what is and we do our best to make it right and we do our best to get through it and we do our best to move on. You know, um, some really good stuff today. So I do want to wrap it up here. Um, she does often have a little um, action section um because and that's kind of been my take home for for you all the past few days um i just want to take a look at something she had written here so this is my take home for you all today um that it works if you work it mackenzie says using the blueprint for decision making on page 77 as a reference point develop your own blueprint this is something you might want to work on with a sponsor or counselor so i'm going to go back to that real quick just so you all have that as a take home and then we'll kind of jump in and check in with the comments. Um, so she's really, she's encouraging and I'm also encouraging you to set up a blueprint, develop your own blueprint. And maybe this is something you want to set up with a trusted advisor, a sponsor, a sponsor, a counselor, a best friend, a parent, someone that you go to. So when she going back to page 77, when she was talking about that blueprint, um, she says, give yourself a blueprint for making decisions and understanding that even deciding to do nothing is a choice. So even if you don't choose to do it, that's okay. That's a choice, right? Um, so she says, before I do something I'm not sure of, I ask for help. I call my sponsor or best friend. Asking for help is a great strategy. My trusted advisors ask me some basic questions. So these are some of the questions that can maybe help go in, in your blueprint that you, you, know, you can develop with someone if that's something you choose to do. Will this harm anyone, myself included? Is it respectful of myself and others? Will it make things better or worse? Is it kind? Is it necessary? Is it true? And then maybe after you've made your call to your, your, your other trusted advisors, there's a few additional questions, you know, in, in your decisions and your choices that you made. You know, if you've already made the choice, you can look back and say, have I acted with love? Am I being fair? Um, so those are just some questions to kind of get you started in, in your own blueprint making. Um, and again, it's important to look at those things while we, while we are making decisions in life, you know. Um, it's, it's just so important to have some kind of a plan for that. Um, kind of jumping in the comments here. Lex says, damn it, I'm late. <laughs> That's okay. Good news is if any of you are late or if you've missed these videos, um, uh, these videos do save always. Um, so you can always go back and restart the videos on our Facebook page. Um, you can also go to our awesome YouTube page. Rock Covery goes on YouTube. Um, so I did post the link in the above, um, description 
that way <laughs> in the above description over here um, to our YouTube page. So all of our videos go on there. So if you're late, if you missed them, you can always go back and check them out. Uh, Lex also says, build my foundation and slow down and think. Absolutely. Is it going to benefit my life or cause chaos? Think. Play the tape through. Absolutely. I feel that it's our responsibility to build our foundation and mental health because that's something we can control and be ready to live life on life's terms. Absolutely. That's such a good point, right? Those are those are some more thoughts. Those are some really good ones too that maybe can go in your blueprint. You know, you can add those. It doesn't have to be the exact questions that, that she had on there, you know, but again, if you get stuck, you know, and you're looking for guidance or you've got a big decision to make or something, a wrench gets thrown in your day and you are not sure how to act, if you're not sure what to do, pause. I've often been told, if I don't know what to do, do nothing. So just pause for a minute. Reach out to your trusted advisors and ask, have them ask you some of those questions. Think through, like Lex said, play the tape through. Is this going to benefit my life or is it going to cause chaos? You know, I often like to think, is it kind? Is it loving? Is what I'm about to say necessary? Is it the truth? Right? Those are all good questions for us to ask. Um, so I hope that you all can continue to, you know, build those blueprints and those foundations for yourself too. Some really good, really good feedback. Some, some great questions to add in there, Lex. Thank you. Um, so with that, we're going to wrap it up a little bit today. Um, so up in the comments, we actually did post, uh, someone posted the link for the info for Giving Tuesday. So that is actually happening tomorrow. Um, and we do have a couple links that are already on our Rock Covery Fitness Facebook page. So you can check those out, but we will be posting some tomorrow. Um, and Giving Tuesday now is a new global day of giving and unity that will take place tomorrow, May 5th. Um, so normally there's a regularly scheduled one on December 1st, um, but they're doing it as an emergency response to the unprecedented need caused by COVID-19. Um, it's an opportunity for people around the world to stand together in unity, to use their individual power of generosity to remain connected and heal. And so you all can um, go on the links and you can show your generosity in a variety of ways um, during Giving Tuesday. Whether it's helping a neighbor, maybe you're advocating for an issue, sharing a skill, um, giving to a cause, every act of generosity counts. So just some good things to remember. Again, we will be posting some more links tomorrow as tomorrow will be a Giving Tuesday. Um, so any anything that you know people, people can give and support, even if it's just supporting others or even just sharing the links, it is all greatly appreciated. And, and it is, it's a good chance for us all to kind of come together and, and present that united front um, and, and just connecting and, and being there for others. Um, and speaking of that, uh, as a reminder, we are still doing our peer services. So if you or anybody else is struggling right now, maybe you want someone to talk to, someone who can help guide you on your own recovery journey, um, we have those peer services. So please get a hold of us. Don't hesitate. We're here. We'd love to hear from you all. Uh, our phone number is on there. It's 585-622-4975. Um, our email is up there, or you can also Facebook message us. So all of that information is currently up in the description of this video that is happening right now. Um, so please check that out. Um, and as always, I, I continue to encourage you all to check out our other awesome Facebook Live videos that are always going on here. Some really great content, some really good different stuff on here too. Um, it's just some, you know, just some stuff to keep you busy and active during this time and stay connected with us and uh, vice versa. You know, we enjoy staying connected with you as well. I appreciate all of you jumping in on the comments. Um, you know, it, it really does help me out too. So I, I appreciate it. Thank you all for showing up. I hope you have an awesome Monday. Good start to your week. Um, pay attention. Pay attention to that self-awareness. You know, what's your intention going to be for this week? What are you going to do this week that you need to change something, that you need to do better, do differently, do the same that something that worked good last week? Pay attention. Check in with yourself. So don't just kind of mindlessly move through your week. Stay with it. And if you need some help with that, we're here for you guys. Um, so please reach out. All right. I will see you all tomorrow. Um, have an awesome Monday. Bye.